Hello there and welcome to our kitchen here in Trim County Meath. Well, if like me you did some baking during lockdown, with some successes and some failures, well, uh, my success was sourdough baking. And in this, I want to share with you my experiences of lockdown sourdough. I hope you enjoy it and I hope it inspires you to do some baking. We have to get the ingredients get together for our sourdough. So I use strong flour, 400 grams, 20 grams of walnut oil, 25 grams of honey, 310 grams of water, 13 grams of salt and about five kilos of patience. So if you want to make sure that your starter is ready, your starter should float in water. So I'm just going to take a spoon of uh, the starter here, drop it into the water and as you can see it is floating. So we're ready to go. So now I'm going to add the starter to the water and bear in mind that the water is uh, tepid. To my starter and the water, I'm going to add 25 grams of runny honey, just to feed the starter. And to that, I'm also going to add 20 grams of walnut oil. In my strong 400 grams of flour, I've just added 100 grams of rye flour. This gives it a nice flavor. So just mix that up together and leave it to one side. I just give that a quick mix until it becomes milk-like. So I add that to the flour. I've removed 150 grams of starter from my starter here. I need to replace that so that I can use it again the next time I go baking. So now I've replaced the flour and the water to the starter. I'm just going to give that a vigorous stir. And I'm going to put it to one side then and put it into the fridge overnight. And I can take this out again when I, I next need to do some baking. Okay, so next we gotta mix the ingredients together. And this takes some time. Some people like to use their hands. I start off by using a spatula and get the whole thing together. So as you can see, it's very dry, but that's fine. Now it's very important that when you handle the flour, your hands need to be clean. And I wash my hands every time I approach the flour and it also stops it from sticking. What you need to do is make sure that all of the dry flour is incorporated in the, the liquid. And as you can see, it sticks to your hand, so you just remove that as much as you can and leave it there. I'm going to dampen that and squeeze it out. Okay, so you just cover that up and leave it for one hour. So we'll come back now in one hour and we'll introduce the salt. Okay, so here we are again and the sourdough has been resting for one hour and I'm just going to add the salt, 13 grams of table salt to the sourdough. And now I'm just going to wet my hands uh, so the sourdough doesn't stick to the hands and I'm going to press the salt into the sourdough. Okay, so now um, with my wet hands, I'm going to do the first of four sourdough stretches. So that's a stretch every half hour for the next uh, two hours. I'm going to do that three more times and then we're going to say good night to the sourdough and put it into the fridge for the night and about 12 hours later uh, tomorrow we will take the sourdough out of the fridge and put it into the oven for bake so see you tomorrow tomorrow okay so we're nearly at the baking process now I did say from the onset that you need a hell of a lot of patience to make this no need sourdough so we're going to look at the sourdough now. It's been in the refrigerator overnight and it's just about ready for the final process. So here's what the sourdough looks like after 12 hours in the fridge. 
and uh, as every time I've just washed my hands I'm just going to touch the sourdough now and you can see that it's nice and springy so it's ready for the next process I'm going to put it out now on this board here and shape it in this banneton which will give it uh, its final shape now just add a little bit of walnut oil a little bit to my hands and a little bit to this spatula. Okay, so here we go. So normally when I'm doing this, I would do uh, enough for two loaves, but just for the camera, uh, I'm just doing one loaf today. And that's what it looks like. So try and shape it into a ball before I put it into the banneton. The next stage then is to flour the banneton. I just use, I just use strong flour. They say you should use rice flour if you wish. So I'll just sprinkle some of the flour there and spread it around on the banneton. And after each bake, I just leave the banneton with any excess flour. Uh, there's no need to clean it off. Okay, so this side goes in here. Now I know it looks uh, a bit sticky at the moment, so I'm going to leave it rest for uh, about half an hour in the fridge. And while it's resting, we can heat up the oven. Okay, so I've just put my Dutch oven into the oven. The Dutch oven I use is a pot we've had here at home. Uh, it's just a, a Le Creuset pot. Um, I've just got some parchment ready and I'm just heating up the oven now to 240 centigrade. Right, so the first thing I've got to do is remove the lead from the Dutch oven. So this is going to be very hot. Make sure you have your gloves on. And there we go. Okay, we'll just push that back in and keep the heat in there. So here we are, our final sourdough. So I'm just going to toss that out, out now onto the parchment, like so. Okay. So the next step then is to slash, put some uh, crosses in the loaf so it rises easier. And this is the way I like to do it. It works for me. One, two, three, four. The four provinces. Ulster, Munster, Leinster and Connacht. Now we're ready for the final stage. Into the oven for 55 minutes at 240 centigrade. away from the bread, which is tricky because it's very hot, which is covered with the lid and the steam from the dough will help raise the bread and we'll come back in 55 minutes. Okay, see you in 55 minutes. Okay, so we're almost ready to remove the bread from the oven. I'm just going to give it five more minutes without the lid. And it's very hot, but smells delicious. Look at that. So I'm just going to put that back in the oven for five more minutes, just to uh, give it a, a better crust. So while that's happening, we can go through the uh, sourdough starter. The thing about sourdough starter, for me, is not to overthink it. It takes up to seven days to produce a good sourdough starter. You can see from my simple recipe that it isn't a big deal. So day one, for example, you add 50 grams of strong flour to a nice clean kilner jar. 
with 50 grams of tepid water and just leave it in a room at about 20, 22 degrees centigrade. Leave it there for 24 hours and then on day two, there's no need to feed it, just observe it. And then on day three, you remove half the starter or 50 grams. So you should be left with about 50 grams at this stage. So you add uh, 50 grams of strong white flour and 50 grams of tepid water and mix until smooth with a fork. So you repeat this again on days four, five and six. Just remove 50 grams of the sourdough starter and replace. The simple rule is whatever you remove, you replace with flour and water. The starter should be rising by now and forming bubbles on day seven. The important thing is when the starter falls, and I have an example of a starter that's fallen here, and it smells quite, mm, smells of hooch, uh, it, it needs to be fed. So this one here I've, be, I've kept in the fridge um, and that needs to be fed. If it needs to be fed, just re repeat day three. And as I said, do not overthink it. If you use 100 grams in your cooking, replace that amount with 50 grams of strong flour and 50 grams of water. Happy baking and as I said before, you need oodles of patience, but the end result is scrumptious. Here in the kitchen with my cameraman, we can get a great smell uh, coming out of the oven. So this is the, uh, I'll just turn the heat off. This is the, the part where you need to be careful. Lockdown sourdough. Thank you.